Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti. I am Brigadier Chatterjee. We are going to be talking about a very important subject today, and that is the Defence Research and Development Organisation. Should this country really want to be a major part tomorrow? Should this country really want to be counted in the global stage? We need to have a military which is adequately strong. And empowering us really is in this organisation, the Defence Research and De uh, Development Organisation. This is the organization which undertakes all the research or most of the research that is required for the cutting edge platforms that we intend to field. Obviously, it's a very important organization has been under the lens all the while that it has existed and it has got its brick patch and it's got its bouquets also. But the general feeling was that the organization could have performed better and that's perhaps what led the government to order a board of experts. And this board led by uh, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan uh, was ordered sometime late last year and has al already given its report. And the report has also been started by a lot of people. Uh, there were certain observations about this report. Apparently, the government has really quite overruled those observations and asked for the report to be really executed. And there's a committee which has been established for that. Uh, before I go any further, let me now call on stage the uh, guest for the day, Dr. Guru Prashad. Welcome to Bharat Shakti uh, Thank you very much, uh, Brigadier Chatterjee. Uh, Dr. Guru Prashad has been a Director General Production and Coordination in the Defense Research Development Organization. And he's also looked after the services interaction part of it, I think, which is very important an area for an organization like Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, which really caters for the services as its primary client. Uh, he's also been a distinguished scientist and is currently retired. Uh, Dr. Prashad, if my first question to you, I could uh, just ask you, is about this report by the professor. Uh, what do you think to put, what are the major points in it? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, defense uh, fraternity, that means both including the existing DRDO scientists as well as uh, the retired scientists who are recently retired and they know the organization very well. Uh, according to that, it is, a, it is not exactly what would be needed, but exactly in the uh, direction is right. One very good uh, important point to note is now the monitoring of the defense development, that is defense research and development, will be right from the top, that is the from the PMO office. That is one very positive thing. Another positive thing, there will be a, another, uh, uh, this thing, no, a subcommittee or something like that, which will be overlooking the progress. These two are exactly what is needed. Uh, then coming to actual implementation, uh, reorganization of labs and other things, uh, I have a bit differences, but I know very well these things will get um, will get ironed out as well as they will get they will have a course correction in the future. Uh, one thing we have to understand is DRDO was not created uh, on a single day. Uh, the various uh, labs in 1958, including trial and inspection group, uh, something drawn from the uh, defense science research, uh, that is only science labs, uh, laboratories, and then the proper uh, laboratories under uh, defense R&D. So these were combined to make uh, form the uh, defense uh, research and development organization. So they all came together with different cultures. And these cultures, because a laboratory is inheriting a culture and it continues to grow in that culture. So these cultural remnants are there always and they will uh, ex they will continue. But only thing is the objectives of developing systems, uh, that is what um, needs focus. So uh, if I can continue for uh, another, uh, uh, this thing, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds, uh, second development second. is... Yeah, development means there are three phases in development. One is scientific research, where the actual scientific principles are tried out in an institute or in a laboratory on experimental level in the laboratory in test benches. Then second is 
uh, converting it into an application technology and then applying it in a actual device actual uh, uh, equipment or uh, system you can call it as a system so these are the three phases that come and uh, the lines dividing them are blurring but the expertise required at each level is di also different i think uh, somewhere here the whatever the reorganization and uh, the form uh, this thing no combining of the laboratories i think this is not exactly as uh, i would have decided all right uh, uh, thank you doctor that was i think a very good uh, platform to take off from uh, my first question let's there are changes that have been recommended in various area it's in your hr it's in your structures it's in the kind of research that you should undertake etc a lot of them let's go to the structural part of it first and in that uh, i would say the uh, role of the secretary or the way the bifurcation or rather uh, the roles having been brought together has undergone changes over a period of years at the moment what you have is dr kamar kamath is at the head he is the chairman drdo he is also the secretary of the ministry of defense for research and development is this the ideal arrangement should we continue with this should you recommend a change what is your opinion i think this is very ideal and it is working it is not only working in this department it is working in every other department also it is not uh, drdo is not a unique case so usually the the head of the uh, whatever department continues to be secretary also and it makes sense and the secretary reports to the minister or council whatever uh, is appropriate so i don't think uh, we need to touch on see there is not much of uh, uh, responsibility when it comes to a secretary secretary is an office if you go to defense secretary how, how, how what staff he has got he has got very little staff so he sees only at the very higher level things whereas in a group of uh, like a drdo chairman he has got much more uh, wider uh, range of uh, responsibilities uh, i am not telling that uh, secretaries will have lesser responsibility they have much higher responsibilities therefore they are secretaries but when it comes to a drdo chairman he has got lot many responsibilities he has to run the programs and uh, uh, you may be knowing that how busy they work uh, uh, this uh, so i i never felt there is a need to divide uh, the secretary and uh, chairman uh, i did not actually understand why it is needed what they would do what this, what will be the role of secretary is it only oversee what the chairman does so then uh, he is only monitoring one person uh, so that is my view uh, but would there be a better focus i'm sure the role of each one of these two would be decided their responsibilities decided and it's not at that level perhaps a question of one on top of the other it's a question of one easing the job of the other i would say and uh, wouldn't that be a better way that you have some separation responsibility and uh, a total focus on to a more narrow spect area uh, which will push things faster very recently not uh, too long ago uh, there this uh, ramarao uh, committee gave recommendations and uh, these committee recommendations were uh, uh, imp implemented and uh, uh, there were different clusters uh, created uh, so these clusters these cluster dgs they are responsible for running so uh, this thing not that uh, chairman drdo doesn't have a role he has a role to connect between the clusters and to review overall programs that uh, will always remain uh, i don't think he is burdened with um, uh, too much of responsibilities which is related to uh, defense ministry itself so there is lot of division of work within drdo he, i it is my opinion uh, maybe this system will work i do not know uh, but uh, i am very very happy with Uh, the entire drdo coming under uh, pmo's office so that the it is uh, monitor is done, monitoring is done right at the top and the decision making will be very fast uh, that i am very happy with that uh, right then let's go right to the top there is also supposed to be a defense technology council and an import committee beneath that in the council you have the prime minister and you have the defense minister 
also there in the council. I think the uh, national security advisors also possibly there. And then in the import committee, you've got the CDS and you've got the principal scientific advisor to the government. So, uh, what is the state of this really? I think that is a that is also a, it will give the it will bring directly. Uh, the participation of armed forces that is very very positive thing i think uh, this is what we always missed we were uh, slightly uh, i am not telling disconnected but uh, uh, the hand holding which is required that will come directly from the top that is what is um, uh, we have to understand see many times this is uh, this is r and d we have to understand and we are not creating same thing or uh, we are not creating something a uh, suboptimal we have to create something which is state of art so otherwise uh, no armed forces uh, forget about indian armed forces no armed forces will accept anything which is uh, below the state of art state of art is tough we have to acknowledge that it is not easy and uh, it is not only uh, the technology you apply how optimally you apply how intelligently you make the overall system working well in an optimal manner that becomes important this is where uh, the very strict qrs where i will not move an inch below that suppose uh, some system is uh, you need it in uh, uh, one ton now it becomes uh, one ton uh, and uh, say another 100 kg so you cannot say that this is not acceptable you have to understand what is the importance of this that this is where we always missed the concept of spiral development so in any country you take it is spiral development you you adapt a system uh, very near to the optimal level and then in the next level maybe induct some hundred numbers of the system that means system induction doesn't stop for want of being uh, supreme so you induct something, people will develop some experience and this experience will give new insights. That is how you develop the next phase of the system. See, we are developing systems of state of art which are comparable to best in the world. So there the spiral development, this is where the handholding of the armed forces will definitely come. Uh, they being at the driving seat, uh, it will definitely come, it will become a focus. Many of our programs uh, got delayed because we were not able to reach that level in the first go uh, offering to the uh, trials. So not that DRDO has not made uh, this thing. There are R&D means a lot of failures. It should be accepted as failures. Uh, but at the same time, there should be leeway. What is the best uh, course of action in the uh, next steps? I think that is what is needed and that will happen definitely with these two committees in place. Irrespective of, uh, sir, irrespective of what organization structure changes you make, the system is driven from the top. The uh, top driven uh, system will always work. They will readjust and they will work. I am sure of that. Right, you were talking about laboratories and their culture, etc., and how uh, these were quite different. But uh, the, we'll talk about laboratories as such now. There are supposed to be test, uh, 10 national level laboratory facilities that have to be created and there are 40 of them. Uh, so, uh, what is the exact status? What is being thought of and what's your opinion? Yeah, my opinion is establishing any test facility is great and that is necessary. But at the same time, we should also understand these uh, kind of test facilities, you need actual researchers to work there. Not uh, some fellow from industry will come, I want it tested. It is not like a material testing lab that you do, need not establish. Many people have that. So that kind of test. We are not test, We are not talking about testing of that level. We are talking about, about testing of systems where actual researchers will have to work there. And that is where the research is carried out in laboratories. If you go to anywhere, experimental research has to be carried out in uh, uh, research laboratories and these test centers will become definitely important. And if any disconnect with DRDO, with these test facilities, then that will not give us benefit because you cannot separate scientists from test facilities. So this is very, very important. All right. Uh you know, involvement of users, that's been one of your core responsibilities, as I understand from. Uh, 
So, how do you really enhance it uh, in this new kind of a setup? Uh, how do you get the more of the industry also, let's say, involved, most more of R&D establishments also involved, academia also probably involved? How do you do it? Yeah, exactly. It is a excellent uh, question. Uh, this is what I used to discuss always. One is the first-hand involvement of uh, armed forces, not just a putting a person in the laboratory and then he actually he becomes part of DRDO, doesn't become part of the this thing. So now what has happened with this setup, the armed forces will directly get involved in development. They understand then they will understand what are the difficulties and wh where are the bottlenecks in research, where are the shortcomings in the research, what is the line we have to catch up, and where what are the failures and risk uh, and other things they will be able to understand better. See, armed forces. They are very intelligent people when it comes to application of uh, and use of uh, these technologies that are provided. So their input, because many of them have experience of using them, that will become a, a very useful thing when uh, somebody is designing and developing. Uh, that is one very uh, positive thing. And uh, when uh, the monitoring is from the top, they understand then they, they become also responsible for giving corrections. So that way it will drive the development uh, in a right direction and that doesn't mean we will never have any delays i don't believe in um, in telling that if a, i always uh, quote this if a system is developed in exactly in the time given in the cost originally calculated then probably uh, it is a mediocre system it is not a, a new anything, new innovation is not possible like that. You, you take any innovations uh, that have come out, they have not never, never they have never come out in exact time and uh, exact uh, cost. It is not possible. If people are telling that, the, that means there is no new R&D or no innovation. It is like uh, construction of a building or construction of a road. We established well established technologies, you go on. But uh, defense development is not like that. It will be, there will be time overruns, there will be cost overruns. But there are many examples you can see. In spite of that, uh, DRDO has developed many of the uh, very, very important and uh, great uh, systems. Uh, let's talk about the cost factor that uh, you brought up. Uh, you know, finance people, they have this reputation of uh, well, being quite critical about uh, the whole project before they sanction uh, final escalations, etc., things like that. So how do you think they should be involved in this whole setup so that you have the finance people talking the right language? I mean, not doing the wrong thing or so not even that, but talking the right language while seeing it actually from the floor level, what are the requirements? No, I have experience of finance people uh, like uh, additional finance or finance secretaries, uh, this thing. I will tell you, if you convince them and if you talk uh, with a true, uh, this thing, no, true figures, how it is going to happen, where are the uncertainties, I think they will agree. They have never become an obstacle uh, per se. Uh, if that is the uh, perception, it is. Uh, I don't agree with that perception. I have found always support of uh, finance people uh, in whatever program I was engaged and I was working. Uh, you have to have a right uh, explanation and a right convincing thing. If suppose somebody doesn't want to get convinced, it is a separate thing that that kind of case you cannot do anything. But uh, it is I, my experience. It is possible to convince finance people. Uh, it is possible to uh, take them on board. They also very. They are they very intelligent people. Work with maths, and uh, they will be uh, able to be convinced. You know, there is another issue which is a little controversial. That's about talent induction into the DRDO and weeding out dead wood. Weeding out dead wood in the Indian environment, I understand, is very uh, difficult. We've not done it in any organization. And well, how do you identify them and how do you really tell them they're out of the job tomorrow is a difficult job. But what's your take on it really? Yeah, I think this is where DRDO needs uh, a fresh look, how to manage the HR, how to send people for upgrading their knowledge, how to redeploy them as they upgrade their knowledge. This is where it is required. See, you cannot, um, uh, in the scientific world, you work, you concentrate on a small domain on a small field and then you develop expert the entire life you spend on that and that is when you become a national level or international level expert 
so it is not that uh, somebody is put from this place to that place and th that fellow will become expert so we are not like ordnance factory where people are transferred from one uh, ordnance factory uh, to the another ordnance factory and they take over as general manager and they will uh, look up it doesn't work like that in drdo in drdo it is a see in drdo the learning takes place by um, what you known as like guru shishya parampara or you can call it as uh, by working with a uh, some scientist suppose my senior scientist is an expert i work with him some 5 to 10 years then i learn what he knows then i take it ahead of that because i already learned for something and i can take it ahead of that that is how the expertise is built and this is exactly you can see yourself in examples in uh, different laboratories if you go inside the laboratories and see who are worked and at whom how they developed their talent how they created new things so i think it is very obvious so learning takes place like that and the talent uh, new talent yes lateral talent has always produced great in uh, drdo so this is where uh, it, the difficulty comes because you identify a phd uh, student who is about to finish the phd and uh, he is having a, a particular research which is interesting to us and i want to recruit him it is not that simple it it takes a lot of efforts because you have to overcome certain basic rules of recruitment in government uh, like equal opportunity to everybody all those things come in so uh, this is where we need to find out some ingenious methods to quickly utilize uh, research uh, scholars and research talent or uh, how to adapt a university academ academia academic uh, talent uh, in a particular project in a scientific research project uh, there should be some ingenious methods and this is what drdo needs to do what about campus placement that is being talked about quite a bit that drdo has not campus, been doing campus uh, placement. campus placement uh, see now uh, unfortunately the drdo is uh, being seen as uh, something beaten up okay this is the impression if you go to a campus and if they know that about drdo drdo nobody comes for, for if you go to iit and put a desk of uh, drdo nobody will come for recruitment because they are attracted to something else uh, but that doesn't matter you need not uh, the talent is not only in iits or nits or uh, great institutes but uh, talent also comes from other places you have to identify the talent what i believe is this talent it is not just uh, uh, this thing no undergraduates uh, and uh, postgraduates uh, it also has to come from research scholars that is where i think we should target uh, good manpower so this is this is where talent hunt is required in that level so we need good phd's who have done relevant research not just any research relevant research involving something which is related to defense technologies which we apply so uh, that is where we have to uh, recruit people uh, the other recruitment keeps on taking place but this is a targeted ta targeted type of uh, recruitment that is needed in uh, drdo and there's also this talk about nat national technology hubs in you know academia institutes of excellence etc would that help that uh, i don't say it will not help it will definitely help but we have to understand uh, the understanding of the defense domain see there are three things in this one is defense uh, this thing no discipline expertise so a discipline expertise somebody may be an expert in uh, say a small part of mechanical engineering like bearings and uh, this thing is top class or a polymer scientist uh, he is of uh, top class so this is what is available in uh, in academia you in academia you don't find a, a person who can think of combining them and making some device this is what is needed and that can happen in in, uh, in research centers i don't call it as defense laboratories you need to create uh, research centers where it is targeting some technology development uh, suppose you want to develop a sensor um, a very uh, cost effective gyro sensor let me take just like that uh, you want to develop a cost effective gyro sensor then what you need is everything it is not just uh, physics and uh, uh, some um, uh, this thing no optic uh, specialist it takes everything mechanical everything it will take so that kind of pool of uh, researchers should be there in a, any uh, national talent hub 
you have see drdo has long back established ex centers of excellence uh, yes they will do their job they do their job they do carry out the research to with the aim of uh, academia they they are not producing any system out of that they will never produce a system because academia is not meant for that so this is where the domain specialists have to come in so this domain specialist are somebody suppose you take a gun a small arms gun you have to develop domain specialists there who have spent their life in designing uh, and testing uh, small arms and continue in continuity in their um, development they understand better what type of so suppose i take material what characteristic of material are required they can say that they may not be know, knowing that but that for that they can go to a material scientist and a group or research group and get it so this is how the development uh, takes place uh, if i can give an example of uh, us us has okay. got yeah army research laboratory and uh, air force research laboratory and nrl uh, naval research laboratory these are three uh the main uh, this thing each of them are in size in manpower are bigger than drdo each of them and they don't they don't design and manufacture anything they only they only give very very um very significant inputs in that and uh, their in the, in their uh, in that setup the the capability of industry is very high if you provide a technology they know how to apply the technology and how to develop into a great product so the product design they already have the domain specialized the specialization if you go to uh, lockheed martin they already have domain specialization they they don't need but basic technology they need it still from the government laboratories this is where nobody will invest money because there are uncertainties in development of technology it may become a success it may become a failure it may not give you extra uh, benefit which you are hoping to get so this is where uh, we need to understand these differences uh, when we reorganize the organization uh, these are these are the things that are needed to be understood one last question and that's a national defense technology road map any ideas yeah. on that definitely i think making a road map is not a um, problem but those things have to be linked to a, uh, like a mission mode uh, program so that where uh, if i uh, if i take example of say a battle tank or even a uh, artillery gun uh, in uh, in any advanced country there are sub system developers for that you have like zf steering gear and then uh, transmission manufacturer They're not one uh, single agency they have expertise in that domain therefore it is easier for any designer or any developer to uh, get it uh, designed for that specification and uh, this thing unfortunately in india we don't have that luxury if a sub unit is required for say, say an aircraft you have to the our the laboratories have to develop it themselves there is no industry that can independently take it up and develop there is no it is that is not possible here because there is no domain expertise in these do, in uh, different domains we are very good in manufacturing but still we have to get that culture in so that will take time and we have to have patience for that and then right uh, transition of drdo into Uh, a great research organization is required not just system development it is system development we have to do because there is nobody else to do system system development the entire the like uh, the strategic program the complete contribution is from drdo so there is no other uh, there is no other option there you have to do it so there is a system development it has to be do now you you take the this thing you no know, in advanced countries you, there are three options in uh, us for nasa Uh, he can choose um, boeing he can choose uh, another company uh, uh, then or uh, elon musk anybody can develop a uh, rocket uh, to go to the international space station they have that capability so now we have to be in the bounds of our limitations and then try to expand it from there and we cannot do it by just wishing and dreaming it has to be built brick by brick so this is what i my firm opinion so we have to see what best we can do with what is available to us and how to grow it 
Well, Dr. Guru Prashad, I think there was a very interesting discussion that we had about DRDO. And I mean, I am certainly uh, quite educated after having heard you. This thing. Thank you so much for having joined us at Barasak. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, this interview. Thank you. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for getting on to bharatsakti.in and do log in like this now and then and you will find some interesting discussions. Thank you.